Look at this funky decor. Decor? Decor? Hey guys, welcome back. I thought I'd do another sit down video whilst I'm still away in America. When I get back I'll be filming more interactive stuff and you'll see that soon. Today I just wanted to talk to you about my Oxford story and my Oxford admissions process to hopefully give you guys some more information and break down some stereotypes that you might have. Right about now is when a lot of my viewers are thinking about, you know, applying to universities, um, whether it be Oxford or Cambridge or other universities, it, do it doesn't matter. The reason why I'm telling you this story is that I think a lot of people have, you know, misinformation and sort of stereotypical ideas about what an Oxford student has to be, or what they need to be, or what an Oxford or Cambridge student has to look like, or be like, or have studied in the past and hopefully my story will show you that it's not always about that. Whether or not you're applying to Oxford, hopefully you can take something from this video, um, whether it be, you know, Oxford admissions itself, or whether it be your opinion on what universities to choose. I want to start off by getting one thing very clear, and it's don't be afraid to be ambitious. I know a lot of people who think, oh, I can't go for this because I definitely won't get the grades, or I can't go for this because, you know, there's no chance that I'll get into that university. I think if you go into that with that mindset, you're already setting yourself back, and you'll be surprised at what you can achieve if you work hard, especially throughout the second year of your, you know, A-levels. Some things can change, things can get better, things can get worse as well, but you don't know until you try. When I say an ambitious choice of university, I don't necessarily mean Oxford or Cambridge. You can pick other top universities in the world. Oxford and Cambridge isn't for everyone, and I understand that. But there are so many good courses around the country that you can really engage with your subject in and have a great time. So don't think that just because your first year has been quite difficult that your second year can't improve. Because, you know, university is a big thing. Uni is a big thing. I want to start off my sort of story with uh, sort of an interview time, right? Okay, so I finished my first year of A-level results. I got back four A's. It was stellar. It was, you know, it was great. Like, things were good. Things were looking all right. I spent a lot of time in my personal statement, and luckily I went to uh, a grammar school which had the opportunity and it had the, the staff to be able to um, tailor my personal statement, you know, make it one-on-one -on -one and things like that. I mean, there's loads of information online about how you can make your personal uh, statement good, but one thing I'll say straight from the off is make sure you have some back history, whether that be work experience or things you've read that show you've engaged with your subject. Obviously, only you can tell how passionate you are about something, but it's about how you apply that passion and how you go out into the world and show that, you know, say, if I liked music, I did you know, work experience at this recording studio, or I wrote this piece just completely on my own, without any credit or whatever, things like that. So anyways, I had my personal statement, I had my application, I sent it off to Oxford, and lo and behold, I came back, um, yo, we want to give you an interview, yada yada yada. My week of Oxford interviews was after my birthday, and so I went after my birthday, uh, the whole week I was there, I did five interviews, um, across the five days. I think I was chosen as one of those, you know, like pilot candidates, so they, they sort of move you around. The general case for Oxford interviews is that you have a main college and you have a backup college, so you do two interviews. Um, and from the off, people are frightened because some of these interviews can be, you know, scary, frightening. Personally, for me, the interview process was one of the best bits. Instead of viewing it as a sort of test or a challenge, what they're really aiming to do is see how you engage with your subject and how you connect, how you can use any previous knowledge you've learned to be able to apply it to things you don't know, how to be argumentative, how to, you know, read source information and take material from it. It's not some big scary test where they sit you down in a room and if you walk out of it and you feel like you know nothing, usually that's a good thing. They've pushed you to the place where you don't know anything and it's shown that you can go that extra step further than most people can't. Long story short, did my five interviews, came back, felt okay. Um, I mean, some obviously went better than others. They quizzed me on my personal statement, some took, you know, readings. I mean, one of them I was put in a room for 12 minutes and was given a string quartet. Uh, just a piece of music and I was said 12 minutes write as much as you can about this piece and I was like okay oh my gosh like anyways I was um, offered a place at Oxford University for three A's um, and I was doing maths physics and music at the time so three A's in those subjects and that was it I got in however at school I was never really you know always 100% I mean I had people in my class who would be getting 100% in public examinations, they'd be getting all A-stars in their GCSEs, all A-stars at A-level, and obviously they would apply to these top universities, right? But the reason why I'm telling you this story is that not everyone that gets into Oxford or Cambridge is like that. Not everyone gets all A-stars, not everyone absolutely excels in everything they do at all periods of their life. Most people are just hardworking, passionate about one subject, and will try and stretch that across their A-levels to make sure they get the grades to get into these universities. I'm there, I've got my Oxford offer of three A's, 
and it comes to examination season and this is you know your, a your A2, your big exams, everyone's stressed, everyone's tired. Just before my examination period I went into hospital with a minor heart problem called myocarditis. Um, long story short, I was in hospital for a while, you know I was, I was feeling very weak, I couldn't work as hard, blah, blah blah blah. During this period I was also going through a breakup and emotionally that impacts you more than you think at exam season because it threw you off course. Um, I found that for myself, the hospital and the breakup, I wasn't in the right mental place when it came to exam season. So I sat my exams, they sort of went okay-ish, and I came back uh, on results day with an A, an A and a B. Usually these would be, you know, amazing grades and I, I, I should have been over the moon at the, the fact that A-levels, you know, they got harder, A, A, B is still very respectable in this day and age. But I was in a friendship group with three of my other mates, one of them got all A stars at GCSE and all A stars at A-level and was doing economics at Cambridge. Another got all A stars at GCSE and A-level bar one, I think it was geography GCSE, and is doing economics at Warwick. Um, and another who got A star, A star A, and got into geography at Oxford at a college down the road from the one that I'm currently at. There I was on results day with my A, A, B, um, missing my Oxford offer and you know, being the only one in my friendship group who didn't really achieve their first choice and that sounds, you know, comparatively bad because I was still going to a great university. My, my insurance choice was Leeds. Um, I would have loved it there. It's such a great city. The music course there is, is so interactive and so great. But I, I didn't quite feel like, you know, I made it. So anyways, I get quite upset on results day and I go to um, the physics department because physics is what I've got to be in. Physics totally finished me. And I was I was just under the boundary. I missed my Oxford offer by about seven marks. And I went to the teacher and I said, yeah, can we get this remarked? Um, what are my chances here? And he went, no one ever gets seven marks on a remark. I was um, seven marks away from my Oxford offer. Uh, it was looking unlikely. Well, lo and behold, I go home and I'm just packing for Prague and I get a phone call from uh, one of the officers at school and they say we're going to send your paper off regardless uh, because you're on the bursary scheme we'll pay for it and I'm like you okay you yeah, great sounds good we're in Prague we're celebrating the you know the end of our results and stuff and in the morning I get an email um, from the from the remarks turns out my physics paper was remarked and it went up nine marks um, so in the end I got AAA this does mean that I made my Oxford offer by two marks two marks two marks in physics that's you know one question maybe one extra line of working that I showed that I could not have showed. It was a struggle. Exam season for me was a struggle. Um, coming to terms with not getting into Oxford was a struggle. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I was comparing myself to my friends who were excelling in every part of their examinations. You know, A star's easy off the bat. They were aiming for full marks instead of just an A star. And when you get to that level of engagement, you, you, feel, you feel terrible. You start to think, why? can't I excel in that specific way? Why can't, am I, am I not working hard enough? Am I just not intelligent enough? Everyone is born with a potential and it's all about how hard you work towards that potential. I knew that my exam season was difficult and that impacted my life in a certain way. But what I didn't do is not stop believing in myself and not stop believing that this could actually be a possibility. Not everyone that goes to Oxford gets all A stars. Not everyone that goes to Cambridge gets all A stars. A lot of people, quite a majority of people are passionate about one subject and may not be as passionate in other subjects but of course you need the whole scope of grades to get in. Not everyone that goes to Oxford or Cambridge, even though it's a majority of people, is privileged, rich and from a private school, you know, background. There are people there who come from all sorts of backgrounds and I'm talking about ethnic backgrounds too. A lot of people that I've spoken to, you know, especially from the ACS community, they've been doing a lot of things to try and get people to apply. They feel like they don't fit in there. And I see why, because Oxford and Cambridge University have always been elitist and, you know, the, the statistics showed that more people from Westminster got in than black people in the entire year in one Oxford University admissions year, 49 to 48 to be specific. My problem with this is that it's got to change somewhere. And if you don't be ambitious and if you don't believe you can do it and if you don't apply yourself and maybe change some of the bad grades you got in first year. This statistic is gonna, you know, stay the same. Hopefully my Oxford story here has shown you that, I mean, I only got in by two marks. I wasn't some excelling student, you know, all the time. I think it's all about how you view yourself and how you see that you can actually achieve a lot more than you think. When you're thinking about applying to universities, do go for an ambitious choice. And I'm gonna stress it again, straight away. If you don't ever try, you will never know. And that's what your insurance choice is for. Sometimes on results day you get better grades than you expected and you, you know, you can move up, you can phone. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you expected and like me, you'll have to go somewhere else or 
you know, rearrange things. But at the end of the day, if you never try, you never know. Later on, I'll release more specific videos about music specifically in my interview process and things like that. Um, I'm planning to get some friends from Cambridge as well to come and help along, maybe do a podcast or two so we get a broader scope of information. But that's my Oxford admission story and I can't tell you how much fun I'm having there. Of course it is a lot of work and of course you've got to apply yourself but if you're really passionate about your subject, the work doesn't feel like work a lot of the time. Please, 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 if you take anything from this video is that be ambitious with your choices. If you're not going to university, be ambitious with your placement or your internship. This moment of your life may seem like it's going really fast, but it's decisions you make now which can affect you, you know, two or three years later on down the line. And it's important you make the right one. Work hard and make sure, you know, you break down stereotypes and you get into the places that people tell you you can't get into because at the end of the day, you will have the degree and they'll look like an idiot. Let me know down in the comments section below any more information you want to know. I'm going to do a whole series of these lining up before the deadline, which is in the middle of October, I think, and for other UCAS related items. For now, I hope you can take something from this video. Sorry it was sort of, you know, not really deep, but a little bit sit down. I wish everyone the best of luck in the choices that they make, and again, let me know what you want to see later on. Just a quick announcement before we go, I will be at Summer in the City on Sunday the 12th of August, which is a festival kind of thing for, you know, YouTube uh, in London. I'll leave a link to tickets down in the description below. Um, it'd be great to see any of you who come along. I'm just going to see, you know, what context I can make and how I can expand my channel. Use minimal amounts of soy sauce when you're... No, I'm just kidding. Well, wash your eyes. Obviously. Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome back to another... Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys.